An AND gate can be represented by having two switches in series. Drawn before you, there are four possible arrangements for these switches. Let's have a look at the first arrangement. Here you can see I've got switch A and switch B both open. Now, in terms of binary, these would be regarded as two zeros. Now, under these circumstances, no current can flow because both switches are open circuit and the current cannot get through from the battery through to the actual lamp. Consequently, this would be off. If we go on to this example here, we can see that A has been left open, so that's still zero, and B has been closed, so that's represented by a binary one. Now under these circumstances, current still cannot flow because it cannot get past switch A. Consequently, the lamp would be off. If we come down here now, we can see we've closed switch a, so that's now representing 1, and we've opened switch B, and consequently that is representing binary 0. Now under these circumstances, the current cannot flow around the circuit because switch B is open. And under these circumstances, the lamp is actually off. If we have a look at the next condition, we've closed both switches, here and here, so those switches actually represent binary 1, and now we have the situation that the current can leave the battery, flow through switch A, through switch B, continue around the circuit, flow through the lamp, and return to the negative of the battery, and consequently, this is now on, so the lamp will be switched on. Let's have a look at each circuit in turn and derive the truth table for each of the possible conditions. Here we can see we've got the first circuit and we've got A and B both open so they can be represented by zero. Now now I can enter those zeros in the truth table down here with a zero and a zero. If we now go back to the circuit, we can see that because both switches are open, no current will actually flow. Consequently, the lamp will be off and therefore that will be zero. So this entry here would be zero. Now let's have a look at this particular circuit and here we can see that A is a zero, B is a one, so we can come down here to the truth table and enter that particular condition. We'll have A as a zero and B as a one. If we come back to the circuit here we can see that the lamp F would be off because no current would flow through switch a. Consequently, we represent that by a zero, and we would have zero in this particular column here. If we now come to this circuit, here we can see that we've closed the switch, so that will be a one, and then B will be a zero because it is open. We then come to the truth table and we enter that condition in here, so it will be a one and a zero, and because no current would flow through switch B, no current will flow through the entire circuit, therefore this particular lamp here would be off and we represent that by a zero. The final condition is this one here, when both switches are actually closed and they would be represented by a one. So we enter that in the truth table here when they're both one. If we now look at the actual lamp, current will flow through the circuit, consequently the lamp will be on and we represent that with a 1. So we now complete the truth table by putting a 1 in that particular position. And this is now the truth table and it's a particular type of truth table, it's a truth table for an AND gate. This is the symbol for an AND gate, and I'm going to label it up appropriately. I'm going to say that I've got an input A and an input B, and also we're going to label the output F. Now this particular AND gate has a functionality that is best described by reference to a truth table. The next thing I'm going to concern myself with are the various combinations in the truth table. Well, the first combination is when A is a zero, and B is a zero. And under these circumstances, we'll have a zero here and here, and the truth table will give us a zero at the output. So that zero would be represented in here. 
The next condition is when A is a 0 and B is a 1. And this will mean that this input is a 0 and this input is a 1. And with those as the input, the output would in fact would be a 0. So we make sure we put a 0 in the truth table as you can see there. The next possible combination is when A is a 1 and B is a 0. And that will result in this input here being a 1 and the B being a 0. And this will result in the output F being a 0. And we make sure we fill that in the appropriate truth table there. The final combination of the input is when A is a 1 and B is a 1. And that results when we have this A as a 1 here and B as a 1. And the output under these input conditions is a 1. So we make sure we enter that in the truth table there. So this now is the truth table for an AND gate. And this defines the functionality of the AND gate precisely. The Boolean representation of an AND gate is as follows. The output F depends on the input A and the input B. And we write AND as follows with a dot. That's the symbol for an AND. So that becomes the Boolean expression for an AND gate. We can often write this as follows. F is A, B. In other words, if there is not a symbol between two input variables, we make the assumption that it is an AND symbol. But this is the way in which we usually represent AND with this particular symbol here. And I would always recommend that you use that symbol until you become well versed with uh, logic gates. So finally, what we can see in front of us is the symbol for an AND gate, its truth table, and its Boolean expression. The key to memorizing the functionality of an AND gate is as follows. We get a 1 at the output when both the inputs are a 1. Every other condition gives us a 0 at the output because we can see here that the remaining conditions always give us a 0. We can also think of it as we will get a 0 at the output when any of the inputs are a zero, or both the inputs are a zero. But the best way to think of an AND is to remember this last entry here. We get a 1 at the output when both the inputs are a 1.